The report did not say how he obtained the powerful painkiller. Well, the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro are officially over this morning, and for Team USA, it was an Olympics to remember. American athletes dominated the 2016 Games, finishing with 121 medals, and that's 51 more than second place, which was China, and the largest margin of victory by any country in a non-boycotted Olympics since 1932. The 121 medals also tops the previous record of 110 set in Beijing in 2008. Michael Phelps, of course, once again took home the most medals with six, while Katie Ledecky and Simone Biles each left with five. NASA's robotic probe OSIRIS-REx is scheduled to launch next month from Cape Canaveral, but this morning we're getting a look at the spacecraft before its big mission. OSIRIS-REx is will it will travel to a dark carbon rich space rock hoping to collect samples and bring them back to earth during that mission it will also study how heating by the sun helps propel small asteroids a process key to predicting their trajectories but don't worry there's less than one tenth of one percent chance this asteroid could pose a threat to the earth within the next 200 years the spacecraft should return back to earth in 2023 a touching reunion between pet and owner was caught on camera this weekend. But it isn't your typical runaway dog story. Let's take a look. Is that your baby? Is that your baby? Oh my God. I'm looking at her skin. That's what I was looking for. That's Nancy Noss, mm -hmm. and she says she was just heartbroken when her 100-year-old tortoise tortoise named Touche <laughs> ran away from her gardeners <laughs> after they left the gate open. Aww. Noss says she had Touche since she was away. just five okay. years old and despite not being a natural speedster, yeah. he managed to cover the distance of <laughs> six and a half miles in ten days. You, you could see that he walked away. away. I think, I think, he, running. Was, I think really? he was happy to be found. <laughs> I would away. say so, but yeah, Troy, I, I'm yeah. wondering the same thing. I'm How confused. Did, I'm a little confused, yeah. right? You know, I mean, it, it gets out of the gate and it's just like this. <laughs> you can't catch it? <laughs> Can't, can't catch it. Oh, well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's home. It's sneaky, man. Tribe. Sneaky. Man, that's a sneaky. <laughs> Whoa, that's a good story. Near record heat today. You know, we tied the record of 96 degrees in Daytona Beach yesterday. If you're out and about at all, you know how hot it was. Today in Orlando, we'll make it up to 95. Not quite the record of 100, which was set back in 1980. Melbourne will make it up to 93. Daytona Beach today up to 94. Not quite the records, but at least near the records. Yesterday certainly set records and at least tying some records. Here is what it looks like out in the tropics. Fiona dying out eventually, still a tropical depression, but we're watching this. This one right here is the one that will be closest to us by the end of this week on into the start of next week. Right now with only a 40% chance of development within the next five days. This one out here just to the south of the Cape Bird Islands with a 90% chance of development within the next five days. So this one could actually get the name Gaston before this one does. I know that's confusing, but it's all about the the speed at which these things develop. Now, the one we're watching more closely is the one that's called 99, Invest 99. This one likely to move over north of San Juan, Puerto Rico sometime late this week on into early next week, moving north of there. And look how close near the Bahamas it could be to us sometime by the end of next week, close enough to give us some beach issues. And again, these models could change and move it closer to us. But for now, we're looking better and better. These are the models on what could be gas stone way off the coast there of um, Africa near Cabo Verde. And again, that will stay out to sea likely and not impact us either. So even if that one gets named first, Invest 90, not a big concern. A lot of invest, a lot of concern about all these models, but we're going to keep you up to date on what's going on. And right now things look pretty good. It's all about the heat back close to home, starting off near 80 in many spots. We're at 73 in Ocala, 79 in Orlando, 83 in Cocoa Beach right now. Here is a look at your forecast. Your forecast brought to you by 2020 Eyeglass Superstore. And we get up to 95 by 4 o'clock with only a 20% chance for rain today. So rain, not a big factor. Making evening plans, rain chances only at 10% and we're still at 80 degrees as late as 11 o'clock. The clouds and rain forecast barely showing any moisture. The West Coast sea breeze developing, pushing in and then dying out. So for the most part, even after 3 o'clock, we're looking good and dry. So the big story will be these temperatures. 94 today in Ocala, 95 in the villages getting 
up to 94 in Daytona Beach, 94 in Cocoa Beach, 93 in Melbourne. On into the next three days, rain chances at 40% Tuesday, 40% Wednesday, really sticking with that 40% chance for rain across the board through the end of the week into next weekend and high temperatures after today and tomorrow will get back below the average right around 90 degrees. Of course, we'll keep you up to date on the tropics. All these numbers could change toward next weekend, depending on how close that system gets. Let's check on the roads now and head on over to Amy Biondello in the Napleton Traffic Center. Amy. All right, Troy, now a very decent start to the day, which means no big delays out there. Even on I-4, of course, with a lot of overnight construction, even Sunday into Monday, we have it not doing too bad at all. Eastbound Osceola Parkway to Colonial Drive, only 18 minutes westbound. Also looking great Lake Mary over to Colonial that way, only 14 minutes. Rest of your major roadways, including State Road 50, looking just fine out there as well. And we'll take you for a live look outside at a very sleepy looking 408 out by Mercy Drive. Very, very nice. That is what you can expect for the most part. That's the latest, and I will send it back to you at the desk. Sounds good on a Monday. Thanks, Amy. The time right now, 521. Coming up in our next half hour, new concerns about the Zika virus. The areas doctors say could be impacted by the virus for years. That's just ahead. Plus, is your job making you sick? Up next, why one study says hating it could have a costly effect on your health. In today's Health Watch, it turns out not liking your job could be bad for more than just your morale. Mm -hmm. A new study says hating your job could also be bad for your health. According to researchers in Ohio, workers who hate their job in their late 20s and 30s can actually feel the effects on their health in their 40s. Researchers tracked over 6,000 people and found those who are unhappy earlier in their careers report being more depressed, worried, and having trouble sleeping mm. later in life. Well, New Orleans will host the 2017 NBA All-Star Game. The news comes after the NBA pulled out of Charlotte, North Carolina, because of its controversial bathroom law. Charlotte was expecting an economic impact of nearly $100 million. A number of other entertainers have also canceled shows in North Carolina. That's too bad because we wanted to have that here. Yeah, there the was some game. There was some talk, some buzz. You know, some buzz about it, but you know, that's all right. Maybe later. deserves it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's get over to Troy Bridges with a check of your pinpoint accurate forecast. New Orleans will treat them well. That's Today right. we are going to enjoy a lot of heat. I said enjoy because we're going to be positive, right? We're going to work hard to be positive today. The good news is we're not going to see much in the way of rain. Rain chances only at 20%. So there's a give and take when we don't have a lot of rain. We have to deal with the heat this time of year. We're getting up to 95 and it will feel more like 100 to 105. So make sure the kids are dressed comfortably with short sleeves and lightweight clothing because that heat will be a factor at the bus stop later today. Now guys coming up, we are going to pinpoint rain chances that do increase tomorrow and there's a lot to talk about in the tropics. There is a system that will likely move close to Florida sometime next week. More on that in just a little bit. Back Thanks, to you. Thanks Troy. Yeah. 526 coming up after this. A big change could be coming the next time you get pulled over in one local county. Yeah, you might actually like it. How being safe behind the wheel could score you a free tuition. Plus a relief for Orange County parents coming up a live report on the arrest of a man linked to a series of school threats. But first, breaking overnight in Sumter County, one person's injured in a bad crash. We'll tell you what led up to it next. I mean, one Live, this is News 6. Locked up and facing charges, a man wanted for making threats towards Central Florida schools is now under arrest. Where he was found and how he almost got away. Plus, making a deadly intersection safer after a fiery crash claims the life of a grandmother and three children. What's expected to happen today along a Deland roadway? And possible trouble brewing in the Atlantic. The system could become our next name storm. What we need to be on the lookout for here in Central Florida. Good morning, Central Florida. It's 530. I'm Bridget Ellison. And I'm Kirsten O'Connor. Thanks for staying with us this Monday. I'm Justin Mormuth. All of today's big stories in just seconds. But we start this half hour with a check of your pinpoint forecast. Here is meteorologist Troy Bridges. It's hot out there. Yeah, it's all about the heat in the coming days. In fact, today getting close to some records. Yesterday in Daytona Beach, we tied the record of 96 at way back in 1941. Here's a live view outside in downtown Orlando right now. Of course, it's dark, but you can feel those temperatures near 80 as early as this hour. We're at 79, feeling more like 83, and that's the real problem today. That feel like temperature with all the humidity. It will feel like 105 degrees at times today. A good bit of sunshine and not much rain in the forecast as some drier air in the mid and upper levels moves in. Rain chances only at 20%. 90 will be the temperature as early as noon, getting up to 95 by 
by 4 o'clock. Now coming up, we are talking about the tropics. A lot going on. In fact, sometime next week, we could have something just off of our coast. But first, let's check on the roads and head on over to Amy Biondello in the Napleton Traffic Center. Amy? Troy, thank you very much. A decent start to the day. Everybody's moving along very well in limited volume on the roadways, which of course helps out very, very much. No significant accidents we have to add into the mix here. I-4 is actually looking just lovely. This is right out by Lake Mary this morning. Not a whole lot work in there. Some westbound cars traveling away from you to either side doing just fine. And your drive times looking just as they showed. Here's 95 as your example. North and southbound. We have zero slowdown issues so far. That's the latest and I'll send things back to you at the desk. Breaking news overnight. A deadly accident overnight that police say started with a case of road rage. It happened along South Kirkman Road just after midnight. Officers tell News 6 a man got upset with another driver and at some point got out of his car. When he did, he was hit and killed by the other driver. The vehicle who hit him did not stay at the scene. Officers are currently looking for the driver. If you have information that can help, contact Orlando Police. Also breaking overnight, a bad crash in Sumter County sent one person to the hospital. This happened just before midnight along I-75 in Bushnell. Investigators tell News 6 a dump truck and car collided, trapping the driver of the car inside the vehicle. You can see crews working to cut that victim out of the wreckage. The driver was airlifted to a nearby hospital. The cause of the crash is under investigation. And developing right now an arrest in a series of threats at Central Florida schools. The man investigators say is behind the scare has been caught trying to sneak into Canada. 23-year-old Jesus Kong was reportedly in some kind of distress when he was captured yesterday. News 6 reporter Mark Lehman is live at one of the schools that was allegedly threatened, Edgewater High School. And Mark, this capture is sure to bring a sigh of relief for a lot of parents out there. Yes, Kirsten, and many of those parents looking for things to get back to normal after those threats prompted increased patrols here at Edgewater High School and also at the four other schools that were targeted. Take a look. This is the man who we're talking about and who authorities had been looking for. Jesus Kong, he was taken into custody while trying to cross the border over into Canada. The 23-year-old was detained on a warrant, but not from Florida after investigators say he appeared to be in some form of distress. Now, Orange County deputies say Kong posted threats online aimed at five Orange County schools schools, including bombing Liberty Middle and shooting students at Colonial High School. Boone Edgewater High School and Colonial's ninth grade center were also targeted. Investigators didn't view the threats necessarily as credible, but just to be safe, patrols were added to several of the, of the schools that he named. Now, uh, while authorities say that Kong is now in custody, few other details are being released, such as exactly where along the U.S. and Canadian border he was taken into custody. And also, uh, the questions we're working to get answered are what sort of charges he might be facing. Again, we're uh, trying to get those questions answered by investigators this morning as kids head back to class here in Orange County. Bridget. Mark, thanks for that update. And we're working to learn the condition of a young girl injured during a motorcycle accident. The crash happened yesterday afternoon at Orlando Speed World Dragway on Colonial Drive near Bithlow. We know the child was airlifted to ORMC. It's unclear what led up to the crash or if a race was happening at the time. In just a matter of hours, construction will officially begin on a roundabout at a Deland intersection that is being called, quote, dangerous. It comes after a grandmother and three young children died in a fiery crash there, but it seems not everyone is happy about the change. News 6 reporter Johnny Fernandez is live where that roundabout is being built, and why is this addition so controversial, Johnny? Well, Justin, some residents in this area, they believe that the roundabout was something unnecessary and that a traffic light would actually be better. And the reason they said that is because they say that drivers, they would have not been able to handle driving around this area and would have caused massive traffic. Now, this project comes after a grandmother and her three grandkids were killed back in April. Now, subsequent studies presented to FDOT show that the roundabout was the best option for this area because it would help control speed, forcing drivers to slow down to about 25 miles per hour. Now, FDOT leaders say that this to land roundabout is modeled after a Lake County roundabout that was built in 2015. The Deland roundabout project has been in the works since early 2015 and was actually accelerated after this fatal crash that happened back in April. Now we're coming back out live. Now you can see that there's a little memorial set up for the grandmother and her three grandchildren in front of where this construction is all set up. Now FDOL leaders, they say that they expect this project to last about 10 months and they do plan to have a community meeting to kind of inform drivers of how to handle this uh, roundabout 
once this constru once construction is completed. Back to you guys. Johnny Fernandez live for us. Thank you, Johnny. We are hoping to learn new details today on the death of music mogul Lou Pearlman. He's the man behind musical acts like the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. The 62-year-old died in prison over the weekend. He was serving a 25-year sentence for a massive Ponzi scheme that was uncovered in 2006. Now, so far, authorities have not released a cause of death, but several members of NSYNC have released statements regarding Pearlman's passing. Lance Bass tweeted, quote, word is that Lou Perlman passed away. He might not have been a stand-up businessman, but I wouldn't be doing what I love today without his influence, end quote. Justin Timberlake also tweeted condolences, saying he hoped Perlman found, quote, some peace. Orange County deputies are working this morning to figure out why a son shot his father. It happened along Veranda Circle just off Silver Star Road yesterday morning. Investigators say the two men got into some sort of fight. It ended with the son shooting his father. The 70-year-old man suffered serious but non-life-threatening injuries. So far, no arrests have been made. This morning, both sides of a controversial lawsuit surrounding state testing are expected to meet in Tallahassee. Nearly a dozen parents are suing school districts across the state, including those in Orange and Seminole counties. It centers around third graders who were held back for not taking the FSA. The families want those students promoted to the fourth grade. However, new legislation was just passed this year saying in order to get into the grade, a student must have taken and passed the FSA. State officials argue it's up to the individual district to promote a student who opted out of taking the state exam. Well, new this morning, when a cop hands you a ticket, it's safe to say it's normally not a great sign. But thanks to a Volusia County partnership, a ticket could now mean a free tuition. According to the Daytona Beach News Journal, it's all part of the Cop Stop program, which was started by the Volusia County Sheriff's Office and Daytona State College's School of Adult Education. So here's how it works. If a deputy gives you a Pursue Your Future card, residents can earn free tuition for ESL, GED, or high school diploma. And as far as eligibility, deputies will have discretion as to who will be selected for this program. So do you speed and get pulled over and then you get I free tuition? Not. I hope you don't have to do something wrong in order to get one of these. I was going to say, the Daytona tickets. Beach, you're going to turn into the Autobahn up there. Uh. <laughs> well, it, you know, speaking of Daytona Beach, a lot of jellyfish stings over the weekend, Troy Bridges and, oh. you know, but it was hot out there. People need to yeah. get in the water. Yeah, we got up to 96 in Daytona Beach yesterday, tying the record set back in 1941. We are watching the tropics closely. Here's Fiona dying out. No more big concern with that because it's going to stay out to sea. We are watching this area of development, though. It is um, Invest 99 with a 40% chance of tropical development within the next five days. Now, here are the models on it. Sometime beginning next week, this thing could be very close to Florida, there for the Bahamas. Many of the models keep it out to sea, but a couple of them try to bring it a little bit closer, something we're going to be watching as we head through this week and early next week. Now, we also are watching this area of development that will likely faster organize and likely get the name uh, Gaston. The, the other one would be Hermine. Yes, got to get those straight. It could be Gaston, but look at it. It stays out to sea as we show you those computer models not impacting us at all. So the only one we're watching is Invest 99. We'll let you know what that could mean in the coming days. We're giving today's weather a B at the school day forecast because we're heating up to 95, but rain chance is only at 20%. Let's check on the roads and head on over to Amy Biondello in the Napleton Traffic Center. I'm talking a lot because I got a lot to talk about. We understand. Amy. Troy's a very, very busy man this morning, but Troy, thank you very much. Roads are not as busy, and of course, that's a very, very good thing, especially on a Monday. Let's just ease into this. And right now, that is exactly the case. Looking great this morning out towards Wildwood. No big issues on the majors. Same thing around the villages. Leesburg gets the all clear as well. Swinging you over right towards Orlando. I-4 is a very, very nice steady ride right now. Nothing really around the surrounding area that we have to be concerned about. And a live check outside as well. Here's how we're moving along over on 95 out by 520. Looking great. That's the latest on the traffic front. Back to you. Amy, thanks. Time now is 540 if you haven't noticed i know my uh, wallet has gas prices across central florida they're going up yes coming up why you're paying more money to fill up the gas plus a bold move by a florida pizza delivery driver after being kidnapped and stuffed into a trunk what she did to free herself and get to safety and new zika fears in south florida as thousands of kids head back to school today up next what precautions are being taken to help stop the spread of the virus? You're watching News 6, getting results for Ocala, celebration in all of Central Florida on air and on the News 6 app. Live with Bridget Ellison, Justin Warmer.
Kirsten O'Connor, meteorologist Troy Bridges, and traffic with Amy Biondello. This is the News 6 Morning News, getting results. In just a matter of hours, thousands of kids in Miami will head back to school, including those in two Zika zones. That's right, Bridget. It comes as fears over the Zika virus grows, and now we're learning that threat may stick around for months. A doctor with the National Institutes of Health says the threat over Zika could linger in the U.S. for up to two years, with the Gulf Coast states being the most vulnerable. Meanwhile, health officials in the two so-called Zika hot zones in Miami are handing out free bug repellent. It comes as thousands of students head back to school. Doctors are warning students to spray themselves with that bug spray before heading to the bus stop. The school district is also giving away protective clothing for students who need it. It's all about prevention, protection, not panic. This morning, an estimated 7,600 kids in Miami-Dade County will be attending school inside the two Zika zones. The superintendent originally considered relocating those students, but decided against it. Kirsten? Cleaning efforts across Baton Rouge are being delayed this morning because of even more rain in that area. Forecasters say the area received as much as three inches of rain yesterday on top of the several inches that fell last week, flooding homes, businesses and schools. The flooding is being blamed for at least 13 deaths now and applications for federal aid have topped $100,000. President Obama is expected to visit Baton Rouge tomorrow and tour some of the hardest hit areas. The man police say is responsible for kidnapping a Jacksonville pizza delivery driver, then forcing her into a trunk, has turned himself into authorities. Investigators say this man right here, Cornelius Roos, kidnapped the female delivery driver after ordering pizza to an abandoned home Saturday night. Police say after kidnapping the woman, he forced her into the trunk of her own car, then started driving towards a nearby county. The woman told detectives Roos needed to stake her car so he could kill someone in Lake City. That's about 75 miles away from Jacksonville. The woman got away after pulling the escape lever in the trunk and jumping out, all while the car was mm. going about 50 miles an hour. Just a crazy story. She was taken to the hospital where she was treated for road rash and a head wound. As for the suspect, he is facing several charges. In this morning's Consumer Watch, gas prices are on the rise. For the fourth straight day, prices at the pump have gone up. Can't last forever, right? Those low ones. Right now, the average price for a gallon of gas in Florida is 209. That's up from 208 this time last week. However, it's still lower than most places in the U.S. At last check, the national average was 215 a gallon. According to AAA, prices are expected to continue to go up throughout the week as the market adjusts to the oil price hike. Mm. Too bad. Well, a heartwarming story out of Utah that all began with a search for a beloved pink shirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a Utah mom recently made a post on Facebook asking for help in finding a replacement for her daughter's favorite shirt here. And it turns out that 10-year-old has autism, has been attached to the shirt since she was in kindergarten. But the shirt's been out of production for years, so finding another one was not easy. That's when total strangers stepped in to help. So far, we have about 12 that have arrived at our house. We have probably about 140 more that are on their way. It turns out executives at Target, who originally sold the shirt, heard about the search, managed to track down the fabric, and they're making the shirts in different sizes that can last the little girl through adulthood. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, I love seeing yeah. her with them, too. Mm -hmm. You can see on her face she was just so excited to get that. Yeah. She has plenty now. Love that. Power yeah. of social story. media. That's true. That is true. That's one of the good things. <laughs> <about social laughs> Let's go over to Troy Bridges and the power <laughs> of... Let's see. I don't know. The Fiona. Heat. Oh, the oh sun. In the heat. Okay, we got a lot going on out yeah, there. Yeah, the Troy. sun's going to provide a yeah. lot of power today. We're certainly going to heat up. Not quite the record in Orlando. The record for today is 100, set back in 1980. We will make it up to 95 degrees today. Melbourne will make it up to 93. We'll get up to 94 in Daytona Beach. Yesterday, 94. Yesterday, Daytona Beach, rather. <laughs> made it up to 96, which tied the record set back in 1941. We are watching the tropics very closely for you. Fiona, not a factor at all. We're eventually fizzling out, staying out in the open Atlantic. Here's one we are watching. This is Invest 99. We call them Invest because they're investigating them. Oftentimes the hurricane hunter goes in and flies and investigates. That's why it has that name. But 99 likely within the next five days, at least it has a 40% chance of development. Now let me show you the models on this one. This 
this one taking it closer to Florida sometime early next week, really over the Bahamas and then moving north. Most of these models, each line here indicating a different computer's idea, will keep it out to sea. A couple of models want to take it closer to Florida. It is something we're going to have to watch very closely in the coming days. Now we've got another system we're watching with a 90% chance of development within the next five days. So this one could actually get a name faster than the one we're watching closer to Florida. This one could be named Gaston, while this one could get the name Hermine. So it depends on the speed and the timing of the development as to what name they get. But here's the one we're watching that could be Gaston. Most models keep it way out to sea. Could impact Bermuda, but not a big factor for us. Again, it's Invest 99 that we're going to watch, and we'll keep you up to date on the changes in the coming days. Again, sometime next week, we could have some sort of an impact if it's not just our beaches. Here's the way it looks along the uh, temperature front here. We're at 79 right now in Orlando, 83 in Cocoa Beach, 73 in Ocala. So a very warm and muggy start. Here's a look at the rest of today. Your forecast brought to you by Fun Spot America. Warming to 95 by 4 o'clock with a 20% chance for rain this afternoon. So the big story today will be the heat, not so much the rain. Only a 10% chance tonight, 82 as late as 10 o'clock. There's the clouds and rain forecast, not showing much. Do you see green? No, we had a few light areas of green trying to enter the picture through the day, but for the most part, we're going to be dry and looking good, but hot. Here are those temperatures. 94 in Ocala today, 96 in Kissimmee, getting up to 94 in Cocoa Beach and in Daytona Beach, and there are the next three days. Rain chances a little higher tomorrow at 40%, and we continue with that 40% chance for rain all week through next weekend. Of course, that could change next weekend's forecast depending on what happens with Invest 99. Temperatures near 90 below the average after tomorrow. Let's check on the roads and head on over to Amy Biondello in the Napleton Traffic Center. Amy. All right, Troy, still a very nice start to the day. We call it a start to the day. It's still very, very early out there. Take a look at your drive times. A OK -OK over on I-4 this morning. Of course, we're not quite towards rush hour just yet. No big accidents. We have to add into things either. Live check outside as well over on 414, showing an extremely quiet start to the day over by Keene Road. Not a whole lot going on there. And that is pretty typical of what we find at this hour the morning and for good measure we'll also throw in a look over at 408 this morning in which both directions are looking just fine that is the latest and i'll send it back to the desk thank you amy 552 a new warning when it comes to your job coming up at six o'clock why making a bad career choice early could have long-term effects on your health but first a check of the big stories this morning including new developments and a series of threats against central florida schools the main investigators say is responsible has been captured what we're learning about his arrest next you're watching news six we'll be right back This is hey there, if you're just waking up, it's 555. Let's get you up to speed on the big stories today. A man accused of making threats against several Central Florida schools has been captured near the Canadian border. Jesus Kong was arrested last night trying to cross the border. He is accused of threatening to shoot up Colonial High School as well as place pipe bombs at Boone High School and Liberty Middle School. Police in Brevard County are investigating after a woman is found dead behind a Melbourne convenience store. According to our news partners at Florida Today, the woman's body was found inside of a tent. Her name or the cause of death has not been released. In just a matter of hours, construction is expected to begin on a roundabout in the land. It's going to be located at State Road 44 and Grand Avenue. That's the site where a grandmother and her three children were killed in a fiery crash back in April. FDOT says the public won't see any big traffic changes until October. Well, it is 556, a warning for beachgoers in Central Florida. Coming up at the top of the hour, why lifeguards are warning swimmers to be on the lookout for jellyfish. Plus, a daring rescue in Orange County after a car carrying a mother and child veers off an overpass and is left dangling straight ahead what it took to get them to safety and looking to get back on track after a campaign shakeup and a softening of tone what Donald Trump is planning on doing this week to help improve his poll numbers coming now live getting results you're watching news 6 at 6 a.m. First on the morning news, the man accused of violently threatening local schools is taken into custody where investigators tracked him down just ahead. And construction on a controversial roundabout is set to begin after a crash claimed the lives of a grandmother and her three grandchildren. Plus... On highway speeds, uh, I mean, you look at the vehicle and how it got where it got, it's just amazing what, you know, what can happen. 
scary moments captured on camera after a crash leaves a car dangling off the side of an overpass with a mother and son trapped inside. Good morning. It's now six o'clock. I'm Justin Woman. I'm Bridget Ellison. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. And I'm Kirsten O'Connor. All of the day's headlines in just seconds. But first we begin with breaking news from overnight in Orlando. That is where one person was killed in an apparent road rage incident. Orlando police tell News 6 it all happened just before one o'clock this morning on Kirkman Road and Windhover Drive. That's where police say at some point during a confrontation, Salman Khan left his car to confront the other driver who ran over and killed him. That driver then took off. Orlando police are asking anyone who may have witnessed the incident to give them a call, and we will have more on this developing story just ahead. Well, turning to the weather now, it was all about the record-breaking heat yeah. over the weekend. Yes, meteorologist Troy Bridges joins us now. And, Troy, can we expect a cool down anytime no. soon? No! <laughs> I'm just telling you like it is. It's going to be hot today and tomorrow. There will be a slight cool down, but highs will still be near 90, which is a little below the average by the middle of the week. Here's a live view outside as we show you downtown Orlando. You can see, of course, it's still dark. We'll see sunrise at around 638 this morning, and you can expect a little bit more sunshine to start than we will see later in the afternoon, but we're not going to see any big rain chances today. We're at 77 now. 78 is what it feels like across Central Florida. We get all the way up to 90 at noon today, 95 at 4 o'clock with a feel like temperature of 105. But look at that rain chances only at 20% today as drier air works into the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. Now coming up, we are going to talk more about the tropics. In fact, we have three systems to watch one really concerning because it could be moving closer to Florida to sometime early next week. First, though, let's check on the roads and head on over to Amy Biondello in the Napleton Traffic Center. Amy, it's a Monday. How's it going yes, out there? Yes, it is. In case you hadn't <laughs> noticed, it is a Monday. Roads are actually doing just fine on this Monday morning. Still quite early, but things look great. You can see here over on I-4, your average speeds exactly as they should be. No significant slowdowns, no accidents, no breakdowns we have to worry about, which certainly does help quite a bit. Taking you for a live look outside over at the Beach Line out by Narcusi Road. Things are moving along nice and smooth there. So heading out the door, you will be able to travel right on time. That's the latest, and I'll send it back to you at the desk. Breaking news overnight. Breaking overnight, the Coast Guard is searching for a man who disappeared after swimming near New Smyrna Beach yesterday. Rescuers released this picture of 60-year-old Timothy Atkins, who they say told family he was going for a swim, but when he never came back, that family member became concerned. Atkins was last seen wearing a yellow shirt and riding a blue and silver mountain bike. If we learn anything new about the story, We'll let you know right here and on ClickOrlando.com. Well, parents in Orange County are resting easier this morning after investigators say the man accused of violently threatening nearly half a dozen local schools is now in custody. And it turns out he was more than a thousand miles away from Central Florida. And late last night, word came in that Jesus Kong was taken into custody while trying to cross the border over into Canada. Investigators say he was detained on a warrant, but not one that was issued here in the state of Florida. Kong first caught the attention of Orange County deputies after they say he posted threats online aimed at five schools, including bombing Liberty Middle and shooting students at Colonial High. Colonial's ninth grade center, Boone and Edgewater High were also targeted. Law enforcement said they didn't think the threats were credible, but just to be safe, patrols were added across the county. A local mother has been ticketed for careless driving after a crash left her and her son trapped in a car upside down and dangling off an overpass. Really terrifying. The drama played out on State Road 408 near Kehoe Drive, not far from the Waterford Lakes Town Center. Troopers are still investigating the crash, but say it appears 27-year-old Lucilinda Quillis veered off the 408 and crashed into a guardrail before flipping over. Rescuers say that family is just lucky the accident wasn't a whole lot worse. The guardrails prevented her from going back into the road again. And, I mean, it was the little wall there that actually slowed her down enough because had that little wall not been there, She's going 70 miles an hour over the embankment down into the road. Rescuers worked to stabilize the car and were able to successfully pull both of the victims to safety. Both were taken to the hospital and treated for minor injuries. A suspected burglar is waking up in the hospital after Seminole County deputies say he was shot by a homeowner who fought back. Deputies say the shooting happened yesterday morning at a home on Van Arsdale Street in Oviedo. According to investigators, the elderly homeowner caught the suspect trying to break into his house through a back door and then break into his vehicle. Deputies tell News 6 when he confronted the suspect and threatened to call 911, 
The suspect then attacked and was shot multiple times. Neighbors we talked to say they were shocked by the gunshots. We never have anything like that going on out here. If you look, my house right now, my door's wide open. We don't even lock our doors. I believe you ought to be able to shoot and take your own action to protect your property. Deputies say the suspect was taken to the hospital. No word on the extent of his injuries. The sheriff's office hasn't said if the homeowner will face charges in this shooting. This morning, we're working to learn more about the death of a man who was found naked and floating in the Sebastian Inlet in Brevard County. Investigators say they found Peter Robinson Saturday morning around 7. He was naked and coherent and appeared to be under the influence of something. An ambulance took him to the hospital, but he later died. Deputies say in the hours leading up to Robinson's death, they tried to make a traffic stop for erratic driving but Robinson kept driving. Both the Sheriff's Office and the FDLE are investigating. Nearly five months after a grandmother and her three granddaughters were killed in a high-profile accident, construction is set to begin on a new roundabout aimed at preventing future tragedies on that road. News 6's Johnny Fernandez is live this morning in Deland at Grand Street and State Road 44, where construction is set to get underway this morning. And Johnny, it sounds like work is actually set to take almost a year. Kirsten, FDOT leaders, they say that this um, construction project can actually last up to 10 months following April's tragic crash. You can see that everything is ready to go this morning. And this whole project is actually going to be in front of this memorial that is where I was actually left behind for this grandmother and her three grandchildren. Now, FDOT leaders say that this Deland roundabout is actually modeled after a Lake County roundabout that was built in 2015. The Deland roundabout project was uh, has been in the works since early 2015 and was actually accelerated after that fatal crash in April. That's when a grandmother and her three grandkids were killed. Subsequently, subsequent studies presented to FDOT show that the roundabout was the best option for this area. It helped control speed, forcing drivers to slow down to 25 miles per hour. However, it did come with some backlash from residents saying drivers wouldn't know how to drive around it. But FDOT says that it's planning a public meeting when construction is done. Now we're coming back out live now. FDOT says that even though workers will begin construction today, the public won't see any dramatic changes in this area for possibly up to two months. So we're going to be staying on top of this project and bringing you guys any changes as soon as we get it. And of course, if uh, any delays happen, go ahead and uh, log on to clickorlando.com and we'll post all that information. And of course, on the news here on the morning and on our other newscasts. Back to you guys. Johnny, thanks. And this morning, two men and a teenager are facing charges in a string of car burglaries in Flagler County. Deputies say they arrested 18-year-old Brian George, 20-year-old Marcus McCormick, and 17-year-old Lawrence Evans in connection to 11 car burglaries in Palm Coast early yesterday. Sheriff James Manfrey says all 11 burglaries were from unlocked cars. George and McCormick are set to go before a judge today. Well, with the continuing hot weather this weekend, many Central Floridians headed to the beach to try and cool off, but it was a busy day for rescuers in Volusia County after they say they treated 170 people for jellyfish stings. Beach mm. safety says three people had to be pulled from the water, but fortunately, everyone is okay. Don't want that happening. Mm -mm. Of course, and it's so hot out there, you want to get in the water, but... You? The you worst is when you get stung. It ruins your whole uh, day. It does. Troy, is, is the hot water, does that attract jellyfish? Do you know? I don't really know. I'm not I don't know either. <laughs> I have to look that up later. I'll Google it. I'll figure it out, though. Here's the way it looks as we show you the latest on the tropics. Fiona staying out to sea and then fizzling, so not worrying about Fiona. But here is the one we are watching closely. This thing could get the name Hermine, and yes, that's how it's pronounced, Hermine. You ask why? Why not Gaston? Gaston would likely be this system that has more of a chance for development faster in the next five days, a 90% chance. So it will likely get the name before this one, but this is the one that would likely be more of an impact for Florida. Now, sometime next week, the start of next week, many computer models take it to the Bahamas. Some keep it out to sea, while some take it closer to us. Still very early to tell, but we're going to watch that very closely again. And what could be Gaston sometime in the next five days likely to also stay out to sea and move away from Florida. We're giving the forecast today a B because we're going to have minimal rain. That's the good thing, but the bad thing, the heat, we're getting up to 95, feeling like 105. So dress comfortably. Make sure the kids are dressed comfortably for the bus stop. Let's check on the roads now and head on over to Amy Biondello in the Napleton Traffic Center. Amy. All right, Troy, still very limited issues on the roads this morning. No big accidents, nothing like that that we have to work around. 95, nice starts 
parts of the day you can see around Volusia this morning, a OK north and southbound directions traveling anywhere else. Really, your travel speeds look very good as well. You can see we are still in the green over on 408 either direction as well. Still a little bit removed from rush hour. So speaking of which, we'll take you for a live look outside over at I-4 right over by OBT. So far, it looks like both your eastbound and your westbound sides. We have zero slowdowns. That's the latest looking great and I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Amy. 610 still ahead this morning. A deadly discovery behind a gas station. What investigators are saying about a body that was found in a tent in Brevard County. Plus new details emerge about Prince's final days. What was found in his home that could have led to the superstar's death. But first, Donald Trump is taking a new stance why his campaign team is signaling a possible shift on his previous immigration views up next. You're watching News 6 getting results for Edgewater, Eatonville, and all of Central Florida on air and on the News 6 app. Storm Pins is sponsored by Parliament Roofing. There are good Live with Bridget Ellison, Justin Warmeth, Kirsten O'Connor, meteorologist Troy Bridges, and traffic with Amy Biondello. This is the News 6 Morning News, getting results. This morning, Donald Trump's campaign promises it is back on track after another week of falling poll numbers. It's all as the Republican nominee may be softening his stance on previous calls for the mass deportation of illegal immigrants. And what he supports is to make sure that we enforce the law and that we are fair and humane for those who live among us in this country. Will that plan include a deportation force? To be determined. So the mixed signals on Trump's deportation force plan come as the Republican nominee continued reaching out to minority voters over the weekend. He met with Hispanic leaders in New York on Saturday after reaching out to African-American voters earlier in the week. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is on a fundraising blitz, but her campaign manager denied foreign donors to the Clinton Foundation received any special treatment. We have Republicans in Congress and right-wing groups doing everything they can to try to uh, make something out of nothing here. A new CBS poll shows Clinton now six points ahead of Trump in Ohio while the two are tied in Iowa. This morning, police are investigating the death of a woman found in a tent behind a convenience store in Melbourne. According to our news partners at Florida Today, the woman's body was found just after 7 last night behind the racetrack gas station on O'Galley Boulevard, just east of I-95. The woman is believed to be in her 60s and was reported missing by friends, but police have yet to release her identity. An investigation into her death is underway. And now a crime tracker alert in Orange County after deputies say a man robbed a kangaroo gas station on Rock Springs Road in Apopka earlier this month. Here's surveillance pictures of that suspect wearing a black hoodie. If you recognize him, call the crime line number on your screen, 1-800-423-TIPS. We're learning more about the death of music icon Prince this morning. According to the Minnesota Star Tribune, the pills found in Prince's mansion after his death had been mislabeled. The paper reports pills marked as hydrocodone actually contained fentanyl. The same source says fentanyl has been described as 100 times stronger than morphine. An autopsy ruled Prince died in April of a fentanyl overdose, but the report did not say how he obtained the powerful painkiller. Well, the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro are officially over this morning, and for Team USA, it was an Olympics to remember. American athletes dominated the 2016 Games, finishing with 121 medals, which is 51 more than second place China and the largest margin of victory by any country in a non-boycotted Olympics since 1932. The 121 medals also tops the previous record of 110 set in Beijing in 2008. Michael Phelps once again took home the most medals with six, while Katie Ledecky and Simone Biles each left with five. Complete domination. <laughs> That's the way we like it. Yes. Well, this weekend, the hunt was on for the best Pokemon player. Not the Pokemon Whoa. anymore, huh? Well, with the Pokemon Go phenomenon sweeping the world this summer, the Pokemon World Championship attracted many new contestants. Well, this was an invita invitation-only event, and it was held in San Francisco. Participants were divided by age groups and paired up by, by skill level. Okay, well, all competing for a share of, get this, though, a $500,000 pot. Whoa. So, in the end, there were six winners, one from each skill level, in both trading card games and video game competition. You know, you can make money playing Pokemon Go. I need to learn to play that now. <laughs> well, I've Troy, been making fun of Troy's it on board. Months. You're on board with playing yeah, Pokemon Go. 500, how much? 500,000? Yeah, that's what it sounds hey, like. I'm going to learn how to play Pokemon now. <laughs> I've been hating on it for so long.
you know, people walk around, they don't know where they're going. Yeah. But anyway, if you can win money, here's the way it looks today as we talk about the heat. That's the big story. Rain, not a huge factor. We're going to be near some records, but not quite today. Getting up to 95 in Orlando. The record for Orlando is 100 set back in 1980. Melbourne getting up to 93. Daytona Beach getting up to 94. The records there will be 96 in Melbourne, 97 in Daytona Beach. Did you know we did set? We tied the record yesterday in Daytona Beach of 96 set back in 1941. So it was hot and we're going to continue that trend. Also heating up in the tropics as we're watching Fiona. Fiona likely dying out in the coming days. Not a big factor staying out to sea. But now these two areas of development are the ones we're watching. This one could be named Hermine. Hermine, that's how it's pronounced. I keep wanting to say Hermine, but it may be Hermine to some folks. Also, Gaston. Now, you ask why this wouldn't be named Gaston because this started to develop sooner, right? Well, now this one only has a 40% chance within the next five days, while this one has a 90% chance. So this one's farther away, but will likely develop faster, and that's why it would get the name soon. It would be Gaston before this one would. Now, None of that matters. Here's what matters. This one that could be Hermine will be the one that moves closer to us. Here are the computer models sometime early next week, taking it up to Bahama, the Bahamas, or keeping it out to sea. Either way, it's a little too close for comfort because a lot of these models can change. We can see some drastic changes in the next five to 10 days. So keep it here. We're going to keep you up to date on what could happen with that. And again, the latest on this one that could be Gaston, likely today or tomorrow, will stay out to sea. Here are all the computer models keeping it away from land altogether. So that's why we're watching Invest 99. That's the one that could be Hermine or Hermine, depending on what you want to call it. Mm, 75 is the temperature in Daytona Beach. I got to get through this fast. Let's check on your forecast now. Your forecast brought to you by Del Air Heating and Air Conditioning. Running out of time talking about the tropics. 95 with a 20% chance for rain today. Tonight, a 10% chance for rain and 80 as late as 11 o'clock. The rain, not a big factor as that West Coast sea breeze builds in, but we have lots of dry air in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. Mid 90s in most areas along the coast and inland. Tomorrow, 94. Rain chances staying at 40% tomorrow through next weekend after today's minimal chance at 20%. Let's check on the roads and head on over to Amy Beyond Delo in the Napleton Traffic Center. Amy? Yeah, a lot to get through, Troy. Thank you very much. As far as the roads go, very limited issues there, which is a great thing for you, especially getting things back to start on Monday morning. For you, here's over on 429. A little hard to speak sometimes on a Monday. 429 out by Forest Lake Plaza. Everybody doing just fine there. As you can see, volume is very light, and that's the reason why your drive times look great this morning. Here's I-4. No major issues. You are in the green. You'll see it there, and you can also see here on our map data anything from Daytona Beach area right down to Orlando still in the clear. That's the latest and we'll go back to you. All right, Amy, thank you. The time right now is 620. Coming up at our next half hour, new concerns about the Zika virus. The areas doctors say could be impacted by the virus for years. That's just ahead. Plus, is your job making you sick? Up next, why one study says hating it could have an effect on your health. What would you tell in today's Health Watch, it turns out not liking your job could be bad for more than just morale. Mm -hmm. A new study says hating your job could also be bad for your health. According to researchers in Ohio, workers who hate their job in their late 20s and 30s can feel the effects on their health in their 40s. Researchers tracked over 6,000 people and found those who were unhappy early in their careers report being more depressed, worried, and having trouble sleeping later in life. Well, New Orleans will now host the 2017 NBA All-Star Game. The news comes after the NBA pulled out of Charlotte, North Carolina, because of its controversial bathroom law. Charlotte was expecting an economic impact of nearly $100 million. A number of other entertainers have also canceled shows in North Carolina. Well, a touching reunion between pet and owner was caught on camera this weekend. I love this story. Yeah. It isn't your typical runaway dog story. We're going to show it to you. Is this your baby? Is that your baby? Oh my God. I'm looking at her skin. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Nancy Noss says uh, she was heartbroken when her 100-year-old tortoise named Touche ran away after her gardeners uh, slowly away. Crawl, yeah. escaped. <laughs> yeah, escaped from the gardeners. They left the gate open. Apparently, Noss says uh, she had Touche since he was just five years old, and despite not being, you know, a natural speedster, he was uh, managed. He covered six and a half miles in just about. 
10 days, but you can see on this video, you're not I the quickest him, fella. But you know what? I have friends who've lost their tortoises. How? They are They sneaky. burrow, right? Yes, they, they go underneath. Don't they burrow? Yeah, yeah. they go underneath fences. That was Troy's favorite story, though. I think it's the funniest thing, especially the way that we say it ran away. <laughs> this is how it runs. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't do like I do, but it just kind of. Oh, uh, anyway, well, at least they got it back. That's the good news, right? <laughs> I can't get over that. 95 will be the high today as we take it to the bus stop by 4 o'clock, feeling more like 105. So the heat, the big story today, rain chances only at 20%. So guys, we are not going to need the rain gear so much today, but that changes tomorrow. Rain chances do go up tomorrow through the end of the week to 40%. So get those kids ready with some short sleeves and comfortable lightweight clothing today, and then the rain gear a little bit later in the week. Of course, we'll keep you up to date. And that tortoise back close to home will not need an umbrella if it <laughs> runs away today. <laughs> be dry. Sounds good, Troy. Coming up after this, a big change could be coming the next time you get pulled over in one local county. How being safe behind the wheel could score you a free tuition. Plus relief for Orange County parents coming up a live report on the arrest of a man linked to a series of school threats. But first, breaking overnight in Sumter County, one person is injured in a bad crash. We'll let you know what led up to the collision up next. You're watching News 6, getting results for Castleberry, Cocoa Beach.